the title of my dissertation is the approach of concepts and phenomena from their natural science uh, into the frame of our cultural historical uh, theory and clouds in print schoolers' thought. And my brilliant supervisor is Konstantinos Javanis. So, my research uh, topic is actually early childhood science education research and how it is interrelated with cultural historical theory. And uh, to be more exact, is uh, the, the research topic is the challenges that uh, cultural historical theory is posing to early childhood science education and how early childhood science education education research is responding to these challenges. <coughs> and uh, I'm actually trying to do that both at the theoretical, theoretical level and also at the methodological level. <coughs> so, um, let me just say a few things about early childhood science education because probably it is a field that we are not very familiarized uh, too. So, um, we all know that uh, um, early childhood science education is actually a part of the curriculum in kindergarten and is also uh, a part of the educational reality of uh, um, kindergarten. And, but it is also a distinct research field and uh, it is a field that has now, um, for the last two or three decades, have. Um, has given us uh, more, uh, many substantial empirical data uh, about how young children are approaching the concepts of the phenomena from the natural world, how actually they are developing their scientific thinking, and how they are developing their scientific understanding, and uh, which are the corresponding <coughs> educational practices uh, in kindergarten. So, till now, we have uh, three main, main basic models, uh, methodological models, models in that uh, field of early childhood science education. And uh, these are actually based in two uh, very concrete uh, theoretical traditions. And this is, uh, first of all, the empiristic tradition, and secondly is uh, the Piazzettian uh, tradition, which is actually Mm, we call it a parad paradigm, and uh, we also have the approaches from the, which actually combines the post uh, the post uh, concepts with a socio-cognitive um, um, aspect, let's say uh, aspect. So uh, this is a lot of work, but however, we have a little problem here because. Uh, very, very little attention um, has been uh, put on these uh, very um, basic um, issues, and uh, we see that although we have uh, so much research, have so many, so much research that have been done, we still have uh, uh, not a good idea um, of the conceptualization of the child as a whole. And uh, we do not have a holistic view of the child and how a child is developing its uh, scientific uh, thinking. And also we have, um, we have not uh, again uh, since now to get uh, a contact between diverse aspects of the, the, uh, the development of the child. And uh, in the bibliography actually there are no interrelations between these aspects, not at all. And that has actually, as a result, uh, that we cannot uh, get an, a good access and access to the complexity and also to the uniqueness of uh, young children. So, is that a problem for the childhood science education research? Uh, and of course it is, because after the psychological crisis, after the crisis in didactics, now we also have a crisis on early childhood science research education because um, uh, actually there are very, very, very important, important result, the results that we cannot uh, get them. There is, um, they are actually uh, disregarded. And also, uh, nowadays, uh, research is uh, in a roundabout procedure. There is no um, development. 
development in the research. So there is also always a roundabout procedure. And that means also that we, we have a really, really big gap between the research reality and also the educational reality. And uh, this gap is uh, going bigger and bigger every day. So, uh, what you have to do is try to minimize these contradictions, find a way to minimize these contradictions in order to find the resolution key for that kind of crisis in that field. And which is that? Well, drawing the, the cultural historical theory, um, we're trying to find the resolution key in the Vygotsky's theory. And why Vygotsky's? Um, I have very good reference here. <laughs> so, <laughs> they are very helpful. And let's try if I am correct. Well, we are drawing upon cultural historical theory and we choose Vygotsky because we want to have a dialectical approach. We are trying actually to find interrelations. And when we talk about interrelations, we mean that we are trying to find interrelations between uh, the child characteristics and the characteristics between the, uh, the, soci the, the child in the social and uh, material and uh, cultural context. And we are also trying to find interrelations between the emotions, the actions, and the consciousness, <coughs> consciousness of the child. And we are also trying to, um, to use units of analysis rather than elements of analysis, which means that we are trying to get access from multiple variables, multiple options uh, of the same psychological phenomenon. And last but not least, we trying to do that in a unity, to try to, to approach the psychological phenomena in, um, uh, in a, as a whole process, as in their entirety. So, do we have a paradigm uh, in that field? Yes, we do, because um, there is a lot of research that uh, has been done, uh, mainly at Monash University, but as you see, and in other universities in the world, and these are researchers and theorists who are actually trying to find the resolution key to that kind of crisis and they are trying to reorganize uh, these classical uh, methodologies in that research field, the heuristics, the Piazetians, the socio-cognitive um, approaches, and to find new directions in order to be more effective and to, in order to get um, the complexity of children's um, development. So here, what we are trying to do is to get rid of this and to get access to this. So we are trying to, our research motivation is to actually to make a methodological sifting from this, uh, from here to here. So we are trying uh, to have a systemic approach we are trying to study the procedures and the systems instead of the concrete, concrete elements and the fa concrete functions. We are trying to be flexible, to have a contextual understanding, to approach the everyday reality of the children, to be in the real life, and uh, to find um, a, a way to understand the individual uh, development and also to to conceptualize the educators uh, not as an external factor of the research, but actually as a cultural tool of the research. So, we have a, a very serious aim. Um, our aim is to understand actually how preschool uh, pre children are experience uh, science and how they develop their scientific thinking as uh, they are interact with their environment. And we actually want to do this, that beyond the learning dimensions because this is uh, all already done, uh, have, is already done at uh, the learning dimensions, but we want to go beyond that. And we're trying to do that in a systemic way, in a systemic view. And also we are trying to move towards specific aspects of the process of development. So here are our research questions. 
the first one, which are the dialectical relations between the personal characteristics and also the situational characteristics that appear at a collective uh, science experience in kindergarten. We have one more. How actually children are experience their science activity? This, I mean, this collective science activity. And the third one, how are children uh, experience their science activity across various uh, social situations? So these are the questions. And uh, oh, this is the hard part. This is <laughs> uh, the research design. So here we are trying to uh, get an access to a developmental research methodology, and we are trying to to do that according to the experimental uh, genetic method. So I have also some good references here. And the first one, we are trying to, to find at what stage is actually the, the function, the higher metal function that we are exploring. And as we are exploring, exploring the science, the scientific thinking, the development of the scientific thinking, uh, we consider that yes, we are in embryonic stage because at that age children do not have uh, develop their scientific thinking. However, they have uh, initial uh, representations of uh, the phenomena of the natural world. The second uh, principle that we are, use, uh, we are using is um, actually we're trying to, to make obvious in our research procedure, experimental procedure, the interaction between real and ideal. And, uh, here, it real is uh, what a, a child um, is thinking um, about the phenomena that we are exploring, and the idea is uh, the developmental, uh, the invitations to development from his uh, peers and also from his, uh, from from the teachers, from the educators. We have one more principle. We are using uh, a lot of the developmental tools, but we actually don't give them to the children immediately, directly, but we are trying, uh, we are uh, uh, very, we are asking them to, to use them. And uh, also we are uh, focused uh, a lot at the, the qualitative changes, at these dy dynamic situations, at the tra transitions on uh, children's uh, development, scientific development. And finally, we are also trying to be focused on the category, on the drama, on the collisions of uh, children's thinking. So this is how we actually organized our research um, exper experiment, the experimental procedure. As you see, we have a collective science experience, which is actually um, classified, it is organized into three phases. And at these uh, three phases, uh, there is a conversational approach between children. There are conversations between children. But at the first um, phase, there is only one child and me, or the researcher, because there were more than me, or more than more, one researcher. So at the first phase, it was the one child and the educator. At the second phase, it was to a pair of children and the educator. And at the third uh, phase, it was uh, again a pair of children, but they were in a different combination, uh, um, meaning that uh, these two children didn't go here uh, together. They changed partner. And also the educator was, was there. And we also have uh, another option to work uh, with a four children team here, and also the educator. And uh, as uh, I didn't tell, but I can say it now, I were, uh, the phenomenon that we are exploring is uh, clouds. And actually, uh, the options of the phenomenon is the nature of the clouds, the formation, the movement, and the correlations that the children are doing uh, in everyday life uh, with this uh, specific um, and concrete phenomenon. So in order, in order to get our data, you organized a, a professional development program. 
uh, which was uh, uh, it, ha it had uh, seven educators in Greece. One of the educators was me, and uh, also um, the the basic aim of the program was to try at least try to familiarize the educators with uh, some of the basic uh, um, principles and the basic concepts of the cultural historical theory. So, uh, after the, this program, with, uh, which um, lasted a year, a school year, uh, we finally get um, a huge uh, amount of data. We have uh, 101 children, and of course we had to make um, a choice. We couldn't analyze the whole um, manuscript. So, we have some case studies here and the criteria that we we put in order to to find who will be the case studies was were actually uh, uh, if the if there was a dramatic event during the whole procedure and also if this dramatic event can could um, um, could help children to be developed. So we do not have uh, 101 children actually, but less than that, more, than, more or less than that. So we recorded the conversation, we had field notes, drawings, and we also using a vivo qualitative data analysis software, which is very, very helpful. So here we are. Uh, these are our analytical tools. And uh, here we are using the concept of Perisivania the concept of historicity, and also a strange concept which is actually a gift from early childhood science education. This is just a gift. All the others pure Vygotsky. <laughs> or just we are trying to be. So here, uh, uh, according to the Prisivania, we are trying to analyze uh, our data in a unity. As you see, and uh, we are also trying, uh, according to historicity, we are trying to find the developmental trajectories uh, into the procedure of development, scientific development, and uh, according to the precursor model, we are trying to, uh, to, to, um, to put these developmental trajectories into a context that is um, the, the scientific part can be un understandable. So, I just have uh, one example, and uh, this is the case of little D. So, I'll read it to you. It's just a small, small extract. It's a, a researcher, it was me. He was the peer, and D is uh, the child which is actually focused on this case study. So, how can clouds come up from the rain? Have you ever thought about it? No, you don't. Yes, I have. No, tell me, tell me now. All right, I'll sing. I'll sing you a song which is about clouds. Yes, we would love to hear it. So, once upon a time, she was singing. Once upon a time, clouds came out and admit the dust, the round dust. And sky comes out when it breathes. When it breathes, then comes the rainbow. And when the rainbow comes, here comes the clouds too. And uh, this was the next one. And the children afterwards, they tried to illustrate together uh, a drawing. So what we try to do here in order to uh, just give an answer to the first research question is that we, we find the, according to the child's characteristics, we try the, to find the emerged categories. And as we see, there was a lot of representations, a lot of sources, a lot of experiences and a lot of abilities. And according to the environmental characteristics, uh, we see that we have two basic categories, which is actually uh, the social interactions and also the material interactions. And we have also here a lot of emerged categories. But the main point at that uh, part is actually not to see the child characteristics or the environmental characteristics. The main point is to see these characteristics, uh, characteristics in an interrelations, to try to find the, in the dialectical relations between them. 
So if we take a, a look again on the extract, we can see that here, is, uh, here it is an invitation for development because um, educator is trying to, to enhance the child to, 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 to develop, let's say, to develop. And afterwards, we have a little drama, a collision, because the children are actually uh, having a little fight. And uh, here are, uh, here is a song, which is uh, an improvised uh, song uh, as a meme that uh, the child is using. And we have one more invitation for development. And uh, we also have a little transition towards a qualitative change, a dynamic event, which is uh, um, the combination with the sky, the rain, and the rainbow. And we also have an illustration as a meme, a collaboratory situation, which is a song they, that the children make together, and also a, co a comparison event that uh, the children try to make an illustration together. And this is the illustration, the drawing that uh, the child uh, made um, in collaboration with uh, uh, the, the other peer. And um, let's go to the second research question. This is the second one. Uh, it's about how, the, how children experience their science activity. And here we have uh, three basic categories to analyze our data. I have put these references because um, I think that Chen has uh, added the, the, um, the act, the, the, the concept of act to that uh, to, to the concept of intellect and act, affect, which was uh, introduced by Vygotsky, but now we have also act. And uh, as you see, there are, there are very, uh, a lot of emerged categories which are uh, classified to these uh, three uh, basic uh, categories. And here we are again. Uh, so according to this, uh, according to the second research question, we have uh, a, a lot of intention and will to struggle with the idea. Uh, thinking about how to come closer to the exploration. We have an uh, incident of imagination, creativity and concept formation. And also thinking about how to combine these elements. Gestures and body movement are always here. So. Uh, we are still in the case of little d, and according to the third research question, which is how do children actually experience uh, their science activity across various uh, phases, we see that these are the three phases from the experimental um, situation, and we see that actually little d had uh, uh, managed to make a, 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 sm a small uh, a step towards development because we, ha we can see here that there are uh, some uh, dynamic events and some transitions. So, uh, while at the beginning she, was, she thought that uh, clouds are actually magical dust from gold jewelry in a box, uh, afterwards she understood that uh, after having a conversation with her peer, she understood that uh, dust, uh, that kind of dust, is correlated with the sky and air as a moving force, and this, for that uh, age of children, is a very good. Um, um, it's a piece of development somehow because, as you see, while she had the actually based here conceptualization to imagination, afterward we have a transition to the phenomen phenomenism. And at the third phase, he managed to make a correlation with the sky to connect the, the phenomenon of clouds with the sky, rain, and also the rainbows. And the, this is an explanatory scheme which is very, very, very closer to the Nazwell causality. Uh, so, hmm. towards a new insight, of course, we haven't analyzed our data yet. And uh, of course, we cannot go uh, come with conclusions. But uh, if we are trying to to just to put um, a new insight here, we see that uh, 
the classical method methodologies are not actually the one-way option in the field of early childhood science education. And uh, we do believe that uh, through a dialectical approach that is based on cultural historical theory, we can uh, uh, try, at least <laughs> try, uh, to use a more functional uh, methodological models and also to to get a better understanding of the children's uh, uniqueness and complexity. Uh, 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 the uniqueness and the complexity of the development of their scientific um, uh, thinking. And um, as a conclusion, we believe, we believe that uh, a reconceptualization and a new theorization in that field can't be, uh, can take part, can be here. So, this is that. The references. And I would like to thank you a lot.